I'm counting down to the biggest IPO this year. That's Lineage. Our Leslie Pickers at the NASDAQ following all the action. Leslie also just spoke to the CEO. Hey, Frank, that's right. We're about moments away from the opening here. Indications currently around $82 a share. I see paired shares, the number of shares that have been paired, about 2.7 million at this point in time. Uh, but at that $82 price, it, it implies about a 5% gain in Lineage's debut if it does indeed open at $82. It priced its IPO $78 per share. That was toward the high end of the marketed range and opted to sell about 56 million shares, which is roughly 20 21% more than the company initially intended. Now, this is, as you mentioned, Frank, the largest IPO of the year, more than $4 billion in offering size here, a key test for what has been a very tepid market for new listings. Lineage says it's the world's largest global temperature-controlled warehouse REIT with 84 million square feet of capacity across 482 warehouses. In the company's 15 years of existence, Lineage has undergone 116 acquisitions to roll up a previously fragmented industry for food infrastructure. Now, as you mentioned, I spoke with the company's CEO, Greg Glemkohl, a few minutes ago. We talked about how the IPO supports the company's acquisition strategy. For one, he said all of the proceeds raised, and there are a lot of proceeds here, it helps them repay the debt from prior acquisitions and gets the company to five and a half times EBITDA on day one, essentially on this debut. It also gives them a stock-based currency to do future acquisitions at a potentially lower cost of capital here. So in the 12 months through March, Lineage generated $5.3 in revenue, although it does remain unprofitable on a net income basis. CEO Lemkol says the company capitalizes on the increasing consumer preference toward fresh food as opposed to canned or processed food. So it does sound, Frank, like we are getting closer. I'm told based on the conversations behind me, which is largely with the executive team, uh, as well as some people at NASDAQ in charge of capital markets. They're just waiting to get that green light from Morgan Stanley, the lead underwriter, to press the button to open these shares for trading. Uh, the indicative price has moved up since I began speaking. It's now $82.05. The number of pair shares are now over 2.7 million, 2.74. Usually you want to get a substantial confidence level and make sure that you have a broad base participation in an offering before you open that stock. So it seems like, Frank, at this point in time, that's just what they're doing. They're making sure that the participation is broad enough to support uh, that debut of trading. Um, so we're kind of waiting for that final green light in order to open this one up. But again, it's going to be a key test of this IPO market because of its size, number one, and also because there are a lot of companies like this. This is a, a, a warehouse company, one that is private equity backed. It was never controlled by private equity, but took in about $7 billion in private equity capital in addition to debt that it needs to repay. So it's in that sense, there are a lot of private equity firms watching this one to see how it goes. Uh, it does kind of fit into that more industrial, traditional, sponsor-backed style company. Uh, so if there is an appetite for, for a deal like this, Frank, it could bode well for additional capital markets activity down the road. But it really does take uh, an IPO of size and an IPO of character that's similar to some of the deals or the potential deals that are in the pipeline, of which there are, of course, many as private equity equity firms sit on a lot of companies that still need to go public. And just like that, you can hear the chairs behind me uh, now open for trading. You can see the current price there of $82.06, uh, and a gain of about 4% here. They've got their lineage flag, so they're waving a lot of excitement here. Uh, another differentiator, Frank, for this one that's important to acknowledge is that uh, this is a, a deal that also accompanies a broad-based stock uh, program. So people, they have about 23,000 employees. All of those employees are getting stock as part of this IPO today. So gains that you see, uh, you've got the founders who are not selling. They own about 20% of the company. You've got uh, other insiders who don't sell into this deal. And then you've got uh, a broad employee base that uh, is now sitting on about 5% gains at these levels, Frank. Uh, Les, as you mentioned, first trade just happened. Watch the current price right here on the screen, 81.83. Uh, important notes, a little housekeeping. Uh, Lineage is a three-time CNBC Disruptor 50 company. Just want to put that in there. Josh, coming over to you. You own a REIT. What do you make of this one? As Leslie mentioned, it's in the refrigerated warehousing uh, space, uh, fresh food, frozen food, et cetera. 
Frank, I am as fired up as all of those people are about frozen food warehouses. I just, <laughs> I, I think this is great. Look, this is the American dream. The two founders, believe it or not, worked at Morgan Stanley. And in 2008, 2009, they took a look at how fragmented this, this uh, business was. And they said, hey, we could probably come in here with capital and ingenuity, and we could probably make this better. And that's exactly what they ended up doing. It's a growth business. Uh, the shipping of refrigerated and frozen groceries, medications, et cetera, it's a great business. And this is the biggest company in that space. It's the first REIT to come public since 2022, the big, the great IPO drought. Probably won't be the last. Investors are back once again. They've got an appetite. They're looking for yield. They're looking for the types of things that REITs bring to the table in terms of diversification. So so we love to see it. And again, it's not just about line. I'm not telling you go invest in this, but like just this broader story that IPOs are important to the economy and they're coming back. Take a look at, we'll take this off the screen for like one second maybe, or we don't have to. The IPO index, uh, the ETF is IPO, great ticker. It's 9% above its 200-day moving average. This is back. It's 48% uh, off the all-time highs from February 2021. So there's a lot of room. This ETF owns companies that have recently come public, and Lineage will probably be the next component in there. I'd also point out it's the largest IPO of 2024. It's twice as big as the previous largest deal of the year, which was Viking Cruises. So this is really exciting for the markets, great for investors. I'm very excited to see the excitement at the NASDAQ amongst the employees. Right. That's exactly the way this thing should work. All right, Lena is just starting trading, trading right now at about 81.85.